children singing the national anthem of Thailand. It's how their school day begins. After the anthem, it's time for their prayers, led by the teachers. Bow once to the Buddha. The Buddha is great. What's so unique about this scene is, the kids are praying to Buddha in a Catholic school. But that's just fine with Father Joe Meyer, who says he doesn't care if the children say their Hail Marys to a statue of Buddha, as long as they know some prayers to help them deal with life. They live in Klong Toy, amidst poverty, drugs, gang violence, and child sex abuse. Father Meyer came here more than 30 years ago and never left. They accepted me. They gave me great honor. They gave me great, great honor and said, you can come and stay with us. Joe Meyer grew up in Washington State, an angry young man. His mother, a Roman Catholic, his father, a Protestant. My father was, uh, he wasn't a ne'er-do-well, but he was, he was a weak man. He drank a lot of whiskey and uh, didn't really take care of us. And I hurt a lot. I hurt bad. And I said, I really want to help other children so they don't hurt like I do or I did. Living in Klong Toy is truly living on the wrong side of the tracks. In that direction, about a mile away, are all the structures and the symbols of wealth downtown Bangkok. But go on the other side of the tracks in that direction about a mile and two miles long, it is the worst of the worst Bangkok slums. Father Joe went to Thailand with two assignments. To become a missionary priest and uh, to work with the peoples and to convert them to Christianity and become holy, I guess. They converted me though. <laughs> Who converted you? The Buddhists and the Muslims. I've only learned to be a Christian by learning from the Muslims and the Buddhists and tolerance and calmness and peace. And, and I used to live back here. Father Joe chose yeah. to live in a slum shack yes. located yeah. in the slaughterhouse yeah. district near the Simi port of Bangkok. I don't think there's one honest, lawful, lawful occupation in this whole slum. It's a great slum. It's a community. They live together. This is where life goes on. The young priest thought it was, in his word, cool to live in the midst of all the thugs and gangsters. But why did you feel you had to be right here in this slum? Because that's where Jesus would be. You can't live uptown. And Back in the 70s, as he walked through Klong Toy, he saw a problem he could do something about. He says, heck. Kids aren't going to school, let's, let's start a kindergarten. He did, and now there are 33 preschools teaching 4,000 kids. Most of the teachers got their start in these same slum schools. This might be the only chance for them to learn. Well, 70,000 children have graduated from our schools, our kindergartens, and they're going on to school. They know how to read and write, and that's really neat. That's really neat. We've given them a gift they'll never, ever, ever lose. What a glorious way to spend your life. Better than being a priest, a minister? Well, I'm a priest, but uh, yeah, I'm a priest. That's what priests are supposed to do. Besides the schools, there's a Mercy Center, which is a campus that provides housing for homeless kids who have been rescued from abusive parents or been orphaned by the AIDS crisis. There's also a hospice for adult AIDS victims. At another building, a safe house for girls. They look happy, but all have sad family stories. They've been saved from the world of violence. One mother sold her daughter for about $100. And this is a slum where most of the, the girls who work at night uh, live. On this morning, Father Joe has put on his Roman collar and has headed out to raise money. His foundation spends nearly two million dollars a year. Only about a third comes from the Catholic Church and faith-based organizations. He gets the rest of it from grants and corporations who hear about his mission. Today, he's headed to a Shell Oil Company office 
to pick up about $1,000 donated by employees. These plaques bear the name of a major individual donor, John Cook. He's a wealthy Atlanta businessman who has given more than $3 million for expansion of facilities at Mercy Center, including a new home for Father Joe. In recent years, the AIDS crisis has exploded in Thailand, with an estimated three quarters of a million Thais infected. Here, come, oh here, look at this. Here comes the AIDS brigade. Oh my. It's a brigade of children, most of them born HIV positive. The Mercy Center is their home. On this day, they stop by the office after school for some candy and compassion from the staff and Father Joe. Are these kids going to survive? No, they're all going to die. Now this one might make it forever. Uh, well, there'll be the two boys won't make it. The two boys won't make it. But you do what you can, day by day by day. After candy, the children line up for what's called cocktail time, their medicine. It will keep them alive for a little bit longer. We're a house of hope and of joy and of life. You got AIDS, you got AIDS. You die, you die. But you know, that's, that's tomorrow. You know, you live right now here today. But still, the reality is painful. Gene Hallisey, a documentary producer, has seen how Father Joe struggles when watching a child desperately clinging to life. Father was with her in those final days and she was in a lot of pain and suffering. And he got down on the floor and he leaned down next to her and he held on to her and he whispered in her ear and told her, I'm right here. I'm not going to go away. I'm going to be right with you all that time until you go. I'll be with you. To me, it was a great act of his faith. In more than three decades of doing things his way, Father Joe has often been at odds with the church hierarchy. For example, scenes like this, a Catholic priest going to a Buddhist temple, don't sit well with his superiors, some of whom he calls arrogant. They don't even know Buddhism exists and Islam and all of these things. Please quote me on this. What are they going to do, throw me back into, the, make me live in the slums at Long Day with people who kill pigs and live with AIDS people? I mean... <laughs> The church, both the hierarchical structure in, in Thailand as well as the Vatican, think that Father Joe is, is a bit of a loose cannon. He's a kind of a wild card. He's a, a fiery, spontaneous guy that's out here. He's the quintessential slum priest. But Hallisey thinks the church realizes Father Joe is here to stay. Oh. Father Joe is a local superstar. He's a hero. He's a household name. He's somebody that every single person in this entire slum knows. One way or another, he's brought a good face of the Catholic Church to a Thai Buddhist country. They love him. They really love him. Every Saturday night, Father Joe has a mandatory mass. The children give thanks, but it's done without the Catholic ritual. As Jean Hallisey puts it, it's more like a gathering of the tribes. And every week those tribes have to gather, like a family council, and commune and, and give pause and give thanks to the greater being. And uh, he has them learn prayers, but he doesn't enforce it upon them by way of stripping away their Buddhist identity. He hasn't been an outsider imposing something foreign upon a Thai slum community. I could never, ever make it as a priest in the United States. Why? They throw my ass out so fast. Everything I do breaks these funny little rules. Everything in the church. Father Joe Meyer claims he was born to be a priest. But for the poor kids of Klong Toy, he's more than a priest. He's an angel in their slum. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, I'm Phil Jones in Bangkok.